before we get up out of here, I did want to talk about the NBA awards, but not the regular NBA awards, my NBA awards. Because okay, I, which I like, I like, I like this. I, th- I had saw when you gave me like the rundown of the show, I didn't really want to, I didn't want to look at it because I didn't want to have preset. Right. Then I was in like a robot. I had all these things yeah, lined up for the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to be able to kind of let you catch me off guard. So I didn't even look at I saw the heading, but mm-hmm. I didn't see. I think I saw one was like least improved, but yeah. everything else I didn't see. So I'm I'm right. I'm interested. And when I read that, I'm like, oh, that's that's slick. Through the wire should steal that. Hey yeah. man, by by all means, if you all y'all want to take that shit, just shout out my show. Like just, just by all means, y- y'all can have that one. I'm not attached to any of these ideas. But why don't we go ahead and start there? And and let me give y'all some clarification for those of you listening. These are my NBA awards, so you're not going to see most improved player. You're not going to see most valuable player, defensive player of the year. That's all played out. You're going to be able to find that shit everywhere. Nice. Let me give you my shit, right? So the first one I want to bring up is least improved player. And this is like somebody that was very good the previous year, and this, for whatever reason, took a drop off. So this dude was just not the same player this year. He took a step backward. Who, for you, would be the least improved player? Mm. When you put it like that, who is the least improved player? Blake Griffin. Yeah, I thought about him. And I'm I, and I say that with love because Blake Griffin is one of my favorites, but he was hurt. Uh, and that's why that's a, actually a lame ass answer because he was hurt. I just cheated. I'm a I'm a this is this is my real one. Mm-hmm. And it's not that he was bad this year. See, that's why it became tough because you said that who was good last year, but then now they're not on shit. This dude was good last year and he was good this year, but. The reason I'm putting him at least improved is because I didn't see the improvement. He just kind of yeah. stayed the same. He's young. Okay. And that's yeah. gonna be Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, I thought about him. Didn't he's take a step still off. In that lane where he's just like scoring cool defensively. But for them to reach where they want to go, he's gonna have to take a step where he his playmaking elevates. Mm-hmm. Now he did get slightly better, but it wasn't better for them to be a significantly better team. That's what I mean by getting better. He's a key guy for them. He's their young star. He's like the face of their franchise, either him or Rudy. But there's times this year where Rudy Gobert was their best player. They yeah. need to always be Donovan Mitchell is our guy. And to do that, I feel like they'd be a much more dynamic team if they could trust him to be the one at times, especially when Mike Conley is was having such a down year. It would have been good if they could just say, okay, Mike, we're going to move Donovan here. We'll have Royce O'Neal as our two. Mm-hmm. We'll have uh, Bogdanovich at three. And then we'll have Joe at four, Joe Ingles, and then we'll have Rudy. That team sounds very hard to guard because if you're doing a pick and roll with Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert, and you have Bogdanovich over here, Ingles over here, and Royce over here in the corner, how do you help off that? Because all of those dudes are surrounded by him. He can just dish. But because he's still lacking an advanced playmaking thing, which can still come. I'm I'm not – I don't want to be too hard on him. Mm -hmm. But until he gets that, they'll kind of be limited. They'll only be able to be so good because – he can score, but he's not even an elite scorer yet. Yeah. I feel that, man. And it's funny that you said Donovan Mitchell because I got his backcourt counterpart as my least improved player because Mike Conley, to me, took a huge step back. He did. That's just, a great answer, too. He just did not fit there. That I mean, you, you could tell that they're both ball-dominant guys that need the ball in their hands at the start of every possession to make shit happen. But Mike Conley just, you know, it just didn't work because Donovan Mitchell is the clear-cut better scorer. So you got Mike Conley trying to play off ball, and that just doesn't work. And I think they actually tried what you suggested is having Mike Conley to the bench. And I'm sure we'll see it in Orlando at some point, having him off the bench too. So I hope so, because they got Jordan Clarkson. Jordan Clarkson, you know, you're a Laker fan. Jordan oh, yeah. Clarkson got extreme game, and I hope Jordan Clarkson uses this to, it, to his advantage, because I think he's a lot better than he gets credit for. Another, There's some other guys. Um, uh, Laurie Markkinen was disappointing this mm-hmm. year. I was yeah. big, I'm a big Laurie Marketing guy because Eric was coach though. His coach didn't know how to use him. We can only use that. We we can only use that excuse so much for him, man. Well, when you feel player, it don't matter who the fuck your coach is. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Yeah, I feel you, man. I feel you. You're yeah. a Laker fan. Kobe was getting Kobe's whether he had Mike Brown, Rudy Tom Donovich, Phil, Phil Jackson. Who else did Kobe play for? Mike D'Antoni. Kobe was Kobe. And I don't want to use Kobe because he's one of the fucking greatest of all time. Yeah. Um, and you you are right. You are right. We got to cut him some slack. But I don't want to use that to just baby him because Laurie Markin has enough talent to where it don't matter who his coach is. It's certain things that he should just do 
period, because he's that talented. I, I only hold players accountable that I, I know for sure you have it in you. If I don't think you can do these things, then fine. I won't judge you. Like Donovan Mitchell, I know he can take another step. Right. I know he can. Everybody else is kind of doing it, and he has to if he wants to keep up. Jason Tatum took his step. Ingram took a step. Shit, Lonzo has gotten better. Um, you know, De'Aaron Fox was injured, but he'll he'll be back next year and, and play at a – like Donovan Mitchell got to keep up, man. Trey Young, Luca, these dudes are elevating. He got to keep up with the pack. Got to keep developing his game. Devin Booker. Yeah. And Devin Booker's a dude that actually added that playmaking to that his play game. Make, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No. Um, I thought of Kyle Kuzma just because it, it just wasn't clicking for him this year like it was last year. Uh, Draymond Green was another one for me. Just see, mm-hmm. I mean, he's he's a dude that needs the players around him for him to actually play as well as he can. He don't work well without Steph on the court. Um, but yeah, that was a good one. So these are the rest of the ones that you ain't seen yet. So I'll start you with a, uh, I'll start you with sophomore of the year, and this sophomore. is not the rookie of the year, but this is the second year player that took the biggest leap. But I'm taking Luca off the table and I'm taking Trey off the table just because those two dudes were on a completely different level. I feel like it's not even fair to put them in discussion. So. Excluding Luca and Trey, who's the sophomore of the year? Shea Gillis, Shea Gillis Alexander. That's yeah. It's hard. To, it's hard to take it away from him, but I do have a different one. But you have Aiden. You say Arden. I don't even have Aiden. I, I wanted to give it to a low key dude. Uh, you you go ahead. And give me. Tell me why Shea though. Oh, uh, for him to have the rookie year that he had, where it was like, oh, this dude is good defensively. He's a little more mature, but then he took the step. And he's a scorer now. You know, he's one of the – he might – I think he is their leading scorer. It's either him or Gallo. They're both at, like, 19, but it's one or the other. And for him to, you know, now kind of be, like, transitioning to a shooting guard because he's playing Chris Paul, I think he's done a great job. Um, and I don't think anybody expected him to make this jump. Like, he had that borderline all-star type year. Um, on a t- And his team got good. His team was in the playoffs. His team was looked at as a team that is not supposed to be where they are. And he's one of the reasons. And – um you know, it comes from playing next to Chris Paul, but he had to be a willing learner and, and pick up the information that he was being given. So uh, I, I got to give him give it to him. And hats off to him for his adaptability because that's a dude who can play on ball when you need him to and off ball when you need him to. That, yeah. That's a hard thing to do. I want to flip you this, though, because this is a guy that I feel like has not got enough his just due around the league. My sophomore of the year is Devontae Graham. I love the leap that Devontae Graham took because he did it in the face – of this Terry Rozier contract, right? Everybody's like, oh, hell, why are you playing Terry Rozier $20 million? Now you got to give him the ball every time. Devontae Graham says, to hell with that, I'm going to be the motherfucking point guard. I'm going to take all these shots. And he's going to eat, what he averaged, like 18 a game um, and seven and a half assists? That's a hell of a season. And the leap, just the gap between the Devontae Graham we saw last year and the one we saw this year, that's an enormous leap for a dude to make, especially coming out of the second round. So I got to give it to him, man. I love what he was able to accomplish this year. No, I like I like that pick a lot, and I, it's just funny that you say exactly what comes to my eyes. It's like he did it in the face of Terry Rozier, and it's just like you dumb fucks. Y'all <laughs> went out and gave him that bag when y'all had me here this but whole you had time. Him sitting right there. How how Jordan was a hell of a player. <laughs> <laughs> not not <laughs> one for the ownership though, man. Not one for the ownership. No wonder they didn't bring that That's up in the last name. Look, man, it's a bad look for the for the. Not for a good look at all. All right, let's keep it pushing. Clutch award. This goes to the player that time and again came up clutch for his team throughout the entirety of this regular season. Um, this is a good one. I'm trying to think. Who is the guy? I'm trying to think of a guy that really, really, really was clutch. Because a lot of these teams are so good that they didn't really have any moments. Like Giannis and the Bucks don't really have no clutch moments. Yeah. I'll say – uh. I want to give it to one dude, but I'm trying to think about this other guy. Oh, Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard. Okay. Yeah, I can't get mad at that. He He's like that every year. He, yeah. Damian Dude's insane. They needed it more this year than anything with the injuries. They had every game that they won, they needed because now they're in the mix to, to use this bubble shit to get in the playoffs. And if yeah. they do end up getting, getting in it, it'll be because of what he did before the bubble to keep them in contention to have a chance. Because the fact that, that, that they even have a chance is all him. Don't jinx that for me, because as a Lakers fan, I'd rather see Very Memphis. Tight. I would rather even see the the, the Pelicans as an AC than Damian Lillard, because he Correct. tore us a new one. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the first games after Kobe had passed away, he yeah. came down to Staples and tore us a new one, man. That was ridiculous. Dude couldn't miss that night. 
my clutch award goes to a dude that I think does not get his just due as a clutch player. And this is because he's a clutch offensive player, but you can't really have him in on clutch moments on defense. Nikola Jokic, man. Mm. Nikola Jokic comes up clutch time and again. He hit, I mean, he's one of the better difficult shot makers in the league with that fadeaway, and he's good at, you know, playing around in the paint. And, and it comes as a surprise, like I said, because you can't really play him on defense. But he's had some clutch-ass moments. He had a game-winner against the 76ers. He had yep. a pull-away fadeaway against um, – was the, it Timberwolves. the Timberwolves and, and over T over call Anthony Towns at that. And then he had another one against Dallas where he, he backed somebody down and he had a clutch shot. So I got to give it to, to he, he came up with some clutch ass shots this year. So I'm going to give it to Nicole Jokic. Top five, one of my favorite players. So I'm, hey, man. Jokic, new, I'm, new point guard for the Denver Nuggets. <laughs> I love all the Jokic love, man. I'm, I'm a big Jokic fan. Big, big Jokic fan. Two other dudes I had in mind. I, I always get my Bogdanoviches mixed up. The the one for Utah, Boyan, I think it is. Boyan yeah. Bogdanovich, he came up clutch a couple times. And then Ja Morant. Ja Morant had some clutch-ass plays this year. Yeah, I love Ja. Shout out to Memphis. Shout yeah, out to That's another thing. Boyan had some t- plays for Utah that should have been who? Should have been Donovan Mitchell. And to their credit, it was it was a lot of it was like kickout plays. It wasn't like Boyan was doing the ball handling and, and came up with a shot. One of them he did. One of them he, he did. did. One, but I love the one that I'm remembering was like a fadeaway in the corner that was a corner. Yeah, that was against the Bucks, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But yeah, boy, I, yeah, you're right. It, it really should be Donovan Mitchell's ball in those times. You, you yeah, because I, I think Boyan hit one, and they started drawing him up for him to get him. Yeah, I mean, because he is the best shooter, right? So if you if you have to take a three and you need a three you might as well give it to the best shooter on the team. But you would like to see Donovan Mitchell kind of put the team on his back in those moments. Yeah. All right, man. Dog of the year. Underappreciated role player that hustles. He does the grunt work. He does all the ugly stuff that nobody wants to do. Give him his props, man. Who's the dog of the year? P.J. Tucker. I had him on my list. I I didn't give it to him, but I had him on my list. I I like where you're going with that. I like P.J. Tucker um, since – uh, before he got hurt, the White Powell. I like the White Powell with the Mavericks. Um, who else are some guys that I, I would think of? I'm, t- I'm, I'm trying to think of teams out in the playoffs who got like role players that really yeah. matter. Um, I'll take those two: the White Powell, uh, PJ Tucker, and I'm trying to think of one more. Let me think of one more. Um, Who's a guy on one of these top teams? I'm trying to think. Who's somebody on a Raptors team? The Raptors have good role players. They, they all kind of dogs. <laughs> like they, they, they oh, all... you know, I take that back. Give me Jay Crowder. Did his thing mm. with the Grizzlies. Then he went to the Heat doing his thing in there, too. So, Jay Man. Crowder. Dude, switch teams. You still give it. I like that. Jay Crowder, he, again, underappreciated player. Plays, does, I mean, he's a pretty good playmaker, they, a lot better than people give him credit for. But uh, I, I like Jay Crowder. I, I hate to see him go, but they did get Justice Winslow out of him. So I, I like that, even though his ass is made of glass. Dude cannot stay up, man. man. I want to see him play, too, because he has a really good game. Yeah, he does. Said he's not going to be able to play in a bubble. I was disappointed. Yeah. I thought P.J. Tucker. I thought of Steven Adams just because he's like he's the, he's a dude who does that every year. Just so much. I love other. Steven Adams, yeah. You know, the Lakers fan in me thought about Dwight Howard, but I just can't in good conscience give it to him. Give me Marcus Smart, man. Marcus Smart is a freaking dog. And when I tell you, I'm 6'1". I, I'm going I'm to go on a tangent here. I'm 6'1", but I'm like a little bit more built than a lot of my friends are. So whenever we go play pickup, I always have to go play in the freaking paint against some 6'5", just sloppy. You can tell the dude played left tackle in high school, and I'm having to go down there and bang with him, man. And that is literally – what Marcus Smart does on a nightly basis. That dude has to go because the, the, the Celtics are so duplicit of, like, people who can go defend in the paint. They have to use Marcus Smart in those spots, and he's really down there banging around with dudes that are just so much bigger than him, so much stronger than him. But he does all, to his credit, it does a lot of the ugly work. He's great at defending on the perimeter as well, getting in passing lanes. And then one play, man, I'm sure you remember this play. They're playing the Clippers. This was the same night that uh, Jason Tatum yeah. dropped Kawhi. Or, no, Jason Tatum oh, dropped Paul George, yeah. And I, I can't remember if it was before or after that play, but Marcus Smart, he fights around Kawhi's long-ass arm. Somehow he gets around that thing, dives into the scorer's table, hooks the ball, is able to get that thing off of Kawhi's heel, Celtics ball. That's just the epitome of what Marcus Smart is, man. He gets He's the award. He fits the dog. He gets the award, yeah. He's a, he is a dog. Yeah. 
Smart. Marcus Smart. Yeah. I like. I love Marcus Smart. I think I, teams need guys like him, man. Let's move on to the. I think this is the last one, actually, man. And this is one that means most to me, just because when we watch basketball, at the end of the day, it's it's fun for us, right? We want to yeah. watch basketball because we enjoy watching this shit. So. This is the award called Most Fun to Watch, the player you just had a hell of a time watching play this year. Who was the most fun player for you to watch? Um, Luca. It's probably really? my number ones. I got so many. Uh, Luca, I had fun watching this year. John Morant fist his mold. He was a much CTV every night. Um, Trying to think of some interesting picks and not just like the typical because every every night you can watch LeBron is night. Like, Zach Levine was exciting. He was, uh, especially because he was like it felt like he was not only battling the opposing team but his coach at the same time. Like he's fighting against his coach and the team. That he was definitely fun to watch. Um, Jokic, of course. Yeah. Like I said, Jokic is one of those guys. And let me let me let me think of somebody who is uh different to watch or for some unique reason Dante DiVincenzo really I, I, I'm a big Dante you to plus that one out <laughs> yeah Dante. he's very good defensively and uh he's he can he can get buckets when they give him the chance to I think he's gonna have some great playoff performances this year mm. right like don't forget that I, hey, it's so important. when it happens we'll come back here I do want to bring up my most fun player to watch because I'd be remiss if I didn't get it to, you know, take every opportunity that I could to talk about my guy, John Moran. When I tell you I have not had as much fun watching a player as I've had watching John Morant this year, possibly in my entire basketball life, because obviously I came up watching Kobe. Obviously you love watching LeBron. Obviously Stephen Curry's one of the most fun players to watch, but there's just a certain level of, when I was talking to Coach Mobley for, for the for the piece that I was writing with my friend, he said something that I'm always going to hold with me, that basketball is a game of creation and imagination, right? The, the, you know, you can be a great athlete. You can have all these fundamental skill sets. But the people who really separate themselves are the guys who are creative and imaginative with what they can do on the court. And John Morant, he just embodies that so well, man. Some of the stuff that he does, you can just tell it was never planned. It's all reaction and instinct. And he does it so well. When you talk about, oh, shit, the, the, the dude, what, what, you, ever, you remember that fast break where he kind of goes in between his legs behind his back for no reason, really, then he it's passes Rockets, it. I think it right? was Jaron Jackson. He said, what? It's the Rockets, I believe. I think so. Yeah, it's just like, you know, where, where do you come up with that sort of stuff? And it's just so much stuff that'll take you out of your seat. The high flying acrobatics, not even just when he dunks, but when the dude double triple pumps in the air, dumps it off to somebody. It's just all so fun to watch because you just don't know what's about to happen with the dude. Not to mention the fact that, you know, he just has this edge on his shoulder. You, you, people love watching a guy that have a chip on their shoulder. And you can tell, like, with John Moran, that's a dude who wasn't supposed to be in the position that he was now. Coming out of – I mean, everybody knows the story about he's hooping in the back gym because he wasn't on the select team. The coach comes in. He sees, like, oh, shit, this dude got something. Ends up going to Murray State. I mean, at every stop in his career, he's been somewhere where he's been the underdog. And I think the fact that he's in Memphis now is just a perfect continuation of that because Memphis is never going to be one of these top-tier teams in the league. They're never going to be a Knicks or a Lakers or a Boston or a Warriors. They're always going to be that underdog. You know, they might get to a point where they're going to compete for a championship at some point, but they're always going to be viewed as one of the little brothers in the NBA. And John Morant is perfectly content with that, man. I remember he said something like when they first got in the bubble and, you know, the players are complaining you about the this. food. You said what? He said, this ain't nothing new to me. I'm used to that. He's like, man, I need a bed. I need, you know, fucking food in my stomach, and I'll be all right. Like, it ain't, it ain't nothing. Like, child, he's just so grounded and driven and, and you know, just in the on-court play, the, the combination of creativity and athleticism, it's all, it all just combines to something that's so fun to watch, man. I mean, you brought him up. Just so fun to watch this season. Yeah, I, I love Ja. I've been a Ja dude since Murray State. 